Ladies, do your research before you go on a Tinder date. I said yes to going on a date with this guy right here tomorrow. However, my roommate, thank God, researched him and couldn't find any of his social media, but then found this. So he's at the bottom and uh, the picture on the top looks oddly familiar, doesn't it? Are you catching on here? If you live in New England and you get Pavel on Tinder, uh, he's fucking fake. I could have died. I could have been sold into sex trafficking. Or I could have been on a date with a serial killer. If his pictures even look slightly fake, Google reverse image search them. Oh boy. Okay, back in 2017, I was on Tinder, matched with this woman who was currently separated. I thought, okay, you know, I didn't know any better, right? So I meet her. Immediately, she starts hammering drinks down, left and right. I'm like, what's your hurry? Slow down. She's real touchy-feely. She says she wants me, she wants me. I'm like, I don't even know you. Just calm down, relax. She got so drunk so fast that we were thrown out of the bar. I was so embarrassed. And then we get in my car. I go, I'm just going to take you home. She gets naked, undressed. She starts doing things to me in the car. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. I'm trying to get you out of the car. She's just crazy. I finally get her to her house. I just want her to get the hell out. And she just gets real serious. All of a sudden, total change of behavior. And she whispers in my ear, that truck is my husband's and he still lives with me. And if he sees us, he's going to kill us both. <laughs> At that moment, I dressed her within 20 seconds, left her on the porch and just took off. That is why I will never date anybody who's currently separated or still married. They may have a psycho husband. And this is why you should always be careful of who you meet in online dating. On November 2017, a woman named Cindy Loof was swiping left and right on Tinder when she finally matched with a woman named Audrey. The two finally agreed to meet for a first date on the night of November 14th and everything was well. They were having fun, making great conversation and sharing life stories. But things get turned for the worse on the second date when Sydney agreed to go inside Audrey's apartment the very next night, and as a result, Sydney never returned home. Her family knew something was amiss when they had not received the phone call in four days and her cat was left unfed, so they immediately called the police. Unfortunately, a couple days later, Lou's body was then discovered. The remains were brought to the morgue in six separate bags as she had been cut into 14 pieces, while a part of her upper left arm was never found. After a thorough police investigation, the authorities found it very odd that a 52-year-old Aubrey Trail and 25-year-old Bailey Boswell posted Facebook videos in which they adamantly professed their innocence before the police even charged them or found Luke's body. It turns out that this couple was using the pseudonym Audrey on Tinder to lure Sydney into their apartment and recruit her into a cult. And the only reason Trail dismembered Sydney's body and removed her organs was because he panicked after she was accidentally asphyxiated during a sexual fantasy. Trail was convicted of first degree murder, while Boswell faced first degree murder charges. And this was the last image of Sydney Luth before she was murdered. Some of y'all wanted another Tinder horror story. So here it is. I matched with this girl, okay? She was, she was okay, probably a seven out of 10, you know, pretty good. And now after a while of us talking, we decide to meet up. So I drive over to her house, it's about a 15 minute drive. I'm outside, I'm like, hey, I'm here. And as I wait, full of anticipation, excitement, nerves, she appears. She's walking up, right? She's like, looks at me like this. And before I can roll down the window to say, hey, it's me, she goes like this. Yo, cause she, she does one of these, okay? She looks, she's staring, she turns, maintains eye contact, then just walks. Just walks off into the distance and goes back in her house. <laughs> so I went home and I aggressively masturbate. Okay, so this didn't happen to me. It happened to a friend of a friend. So she met this guy on Tinder and he was like, yeah, you can come over. I'll make you dinner. So she went over to his house and there was nothing in the apartment except a table and two chairs. And she asked him why. And he was like, oh, I just moved in. Um, <laughs> first of all, that's a little sus. Second of all, sir, like, are you sleeping on the table? Like, what? <laughs> Don't you move a bed first into the apartment? Like, okay. Anyways, he makes her dinner. They eat dinner. And then she starts to feel sick immediately, like immediately. And she's like, oh my God, I'm not feeling well. Like, I think I'm going to go home. And he's like, no. And she's like, what? And he's like, no, you're fine. And she's like, I'm not fine. 
Um, and so basically they fight about it, but she gets out of the apartment, um, and she calls her friend and she's like, hey, like, you need to take me to the hospital right now. They take her to the ER, they pump her stomach, and they find human remains in her stomach. This guy fed her human remains. Um, yeah, so basically he fed her human remains. Uh, he was probably gonna do the same thing to her, turn her into human remains, and then feed them to someone else like a vicious cannibalistic cycle um and so she called the police they went to his apartment he's obviously not there table and chairs are gone until this day he's never been caught hi guys so i want to tell you about one of the most awkward hooking up experiences i've ever had and i'm gonna talk really fast because i got a lot to fit in so i've got a, a jaw condition and sometimes my jaw locks open and sometimes it locks shut like it'll snap shut so this dude i'm seeing he asked me to a uh, give him that a good old glock glock and I'm like okay when I say I'm done I'm done he was fine with that um I explained the whole thing he was fine with that and so we're going about 30 seconds in I feel my jaw slip and I push him as hard as I physically can and uh my jaw snaps shut I almost bit his dick off um about 15 minutes into regular sex um I start having an asthma attack so he has to go wake up my roommate get my inhaler from her come back whatever we handle that um we keep going he has to make it on top normally I don't do that because I have chronic hip dysplasia and uh I can't walk it's really painful whatever and so I was like, okay, a couple minutes, when I say I'm done, I'm done. He was fine with that. Um, so I get on top, 15 minutes later, I'm like, okay, I'm really done. Um, I physically can't get off of him. I can't move my legs. I cannot get off of him. So he has to pick me up, yeet me off, and then my legs are stuck open until he pushes my hips back into place so they can close. <laughs> Here's another reason why y'all need to be cautious using Tinder. This is not as fun, but, well, they're both not fun, but. <laughs> I met someone on Tinder and I got an STD like long story short and not like one of the curable ones the ones that stick with you forever y'all need to be careful like I, i'm sorry but um after all the stuff that i've experienced on tinder they need to abolish that app like that don't need to be an app no more all dating apps need to be abolished period because it's ridiculous the stuff that goes on on there and the stories that i've heard from women like myself how dare men like thinking they can do whatever like what yeah be careful because um <laughs> i'm literally 20 like i literally <laughs> like how i get an std this early in my life <laughs> i want to know what's the most expensive uber ride you've ever paid for and what's the story behind it i've been waiting for this one so back in the days of my drinking i went on a date with this guy on tinder and we went back to his place and um, I went to the bathroom to like get fresh and whatever. And then when I came back into his bedroom, he was passed out, butt ass naked with a condom on, just ready to go. Um, we hadn't even kissed yet. Um, and so I grabbed his wallet and put his credit card information into my Uber account. And I got myself like an Uber black car from his neighborhood to mine. And it ended up costing like $75. The next day, Uber flagged my account for fraud, as they should. And I got out of it by manipulating them into thinking that I had let a guy put his credit card in my account because I was too drunk to get home by myself. I'm sober now. So I mean, this guy, everything's going well. Starts bragging about how he can drive his Ford Fiesta extremely fast me and me didn't really pay much attention to it i was just like yeah good for you now bearing in mind it was one hour it was pitch black it started hammering it down with rain and he lost control of the car the car went straight into a tree obviously the tree one the airbags went up he was unconscious i was just like what the fuck has just happened smelt burning thought the car was going to explode with me and him in it a few hours later paramedics came they got me out of the car they cut him out of the car he was at the hospital the next day i had to have metal plates put in my back i had to have metal plates put in my wrist don't know if you can see that big fat scar um and i had to have half my bill removed so i got bored and i started reading reddit tinder stories and this one takes the freaking cake i would never date again that would be the end of it i would be so single for the rest of my life i would never absolutely ever date again 
So this girl meets a man on Tinder. They hit it off. He's really good looking, very interesting, has a good job, has his own money, own car, super independent. Like, he's great. So they decide to meet up and they go to a bar. Uh, things happen, as, you know, some, most Tinder dates do. And she goes home thinking nothing of it. Well, a few days later, she starts to feel sick. And she's like, oh, God, I've gotten sick. You know, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, Pre-COVID. So it, it's not COVID. But uh, so she goes to the clinic and gets checked out. And they send stuff out for testing. They say, you know, we'll be in touch. Right. She gets a call a day or two later saying, come to the emergency room you need to come to the emergency room right now. And she's like, oh, Jesus, like, what the hell could it possibly be? What could I, what could I have come in contact with? I don't do anything. I don't go anywhere, you know, whatever. Not thinking about her Tinder date a couple weeks prior. Well, she gets in and the police are waiting for her. I'm going to try to do this in one, one part because it's kind of a lot. The police are waiting for her and they say that you have a larva in you that only comes from dead bodies. So we want to know who you murdered. And they're talking about like arresting her for murder. So they go through. She's like, it couldn't be me. I didn't hurt anybody. You know, you can see everybody I've seen in the last several weeks, several months. Talk to them. Make sure they're still alive, etc., etc. So they go through the list and they get to the guy. So they go find the guy. Turns out he works in a morgue. And he has been sleeping with a majority of the dead bodies in his care. And that's where she picked it up. Oh, dear God, I want to die. I could have gone my whole life without knowing that. <laughs> Warning, this content is not suitable for anybody under the age of 18. If that applies to you, then please keep scrolling. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Anyway, so... All I see on TikTok is tender horror stories and plenty of fish horror stories and dating dating site horror stories. So what did I do at 37 years of age? I went and joined a dating site because, you know, I like to punish myself. So I am 48 hours into this dating site and I get my first message and I go to read it. And it is from an 80 year old man. And he says, hey there, beautiful. Would you like to come play with my balls? And I wasn't going to respond, but the asshole in me had to. And I said, sure, but you're stripes and I'm solids. Tell me a first date story when you realized they were not getting another date. Oh, I've got you. It's the year of our Lord, 2017. Now ex-wife told me it was over. Time had passed and I said to myself, I'm going to go on a date. Turn on the old Tinder. I meet a lovely young lady. He agreed to meet at Applebee's because it's a small southern Indiana town. There's not many places to eat. I go and I sit down. She comes in and she is just... <laughs> Conversations are had. It's perfect. There are fireworks. Pow! She's doing something kind of weird. It's this. Okay, that's fine. Nervous tick. I do this when I get nervous. But I notice her hand goes behind her back. And then up here. I see from one of the mirrors on the wall that her hand is going down her pants. And then back up to her nose. Over the appetizers, it hits me. She is straight Minecrafting. Be living the gold rush. Fingering her ass. Then... We have been sharing french fries. Just. Would you like a fry? Oh, hell no. So this is a description of the worst Tinder date I ever had. I agreed to meet a guy for drinks. We drove separate cars. I drank three drinks. Big mistake. My limit is really one and a half. And so when he said, hey, let's go to my house, I was going, uh, no, I, and I was in his car. And I'm in his car thinking, this is a bad, then I'm in his kitchen. He comes behind me, flips my dress up and over my head. I am now nude in his kitchen and he's pushing me towards the bedroom. And I am saying, uh, I don't fuck on the first date. I don't fuck on the first date. And he throws me onto the bed, flips off his clothes, jumps on top of me. And friends, the only thing that prevented the near rape from turning into a completed rape is my ability to throw up on command and I think that should be taught in schools keep yourself safe out there ladies <laughs> hi um, thank you you're welcome this is um it's interesting right you like it? <laughs> yeah um I kind of almost got lost on the way here but My door seems I hope you don't you. kill me <laughs> no it's okay you didn't want to wear makeup today <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, I figured you'd wear makeup, so it's a date. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th
No. I'm not so sure about the helpful be the casual. <laughs> we're sitting in a fucking. We're going for a hike. I don't know why you're wearing flip flops. First of all, you made me meet you in a random fucking forest. I'll probably get poison ivy on the way home. Second of all. Never forget the time that I was on Tinder a match with a fella and at the time I had forgotten to take off my previous job and the bio it said that I worked at JD Sports when I'd actually quit there and he messaged me being like oh hi you know usual chit chat blah 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 and then he was like oh could you get me discount wink wink and I was like oh I don't work there anymore lol and the fucker unmatched me what the fuck oh but it doesn't end there I was out clubbing with the girls a couple of days after that at the weekend. Who the fuck did I run into? But Mr. Matt. So if that's you, Matt, you know who you are. Here's the kicker. He didn't even recognize me and tried to chat me up. I was like, excuse you. Excuse you. In conclusion, men are trash. Isn't that right, Luna? Men are trash. Oh, she does not like me in the minute.